just so you kind of understand that graph a little bit better. Compressor is going to modify the top end mm -hmm. of the decibel range. Okay. So over here you have the dynamic range. So these longer waves are louder than these shorter waves. So That's all those peaks is where the compressor is going to deal with that, basically the, spi the make spikes. Correct, smaller so the, the mix is more kind of even, I guess. Mm -hmm. or so you don't get these sharp, <coughs> spiky mm -hmm. sounds in the, in the audio, right? Uh -huh. Right, okay. Single sound equipment has a clip or a limiter. Um, basically means if the signal gets too strong, it'll just completely cut the signal off so it doesn't damage any of the internal components. Like right here, this red light's also mute, but if I unmute the channel and I have it going in and that starts to light up, I know I'm clipping the signal because the volume going through the internal components is so loud that the board automatically cuts off the signal so it doesn't destroy any components. I got it. It's got internal protection. Uh -huh. So when they said that it, it would clip, that means the volume going in was louder than what the internal components could handle. So when you're adjusting the gain, are you adjusting on the board here, the gain? Uh -huh. So the, best, the, way, gain the best way to adjust gain is to have the, the volume at unity, at zero, unmute the channel, and then you want to turn the gain up to the desired level that you want the sound to be. So, you know, during mic checks, you want every mic to be at unity, and you go through and you turn up the, the gain to get to the right volume, and then once it's set, then you can do modif modifications during the show. Mm. But that's usually how you set gain, and there are some cool features in the board that can help you with that as well. Okay. <coughs> Here. Actually, um, I'll, get, I'll get to that later, because these next three videos are pretty much the same thing. Okay. So we'll just go through all the other, the next that. So right here, so if you, it doesn't cut, clipping, cuts off the signal completely. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is a limiter allows the signal to pass, but it will only, it, it kind of reduces the signal. So if this, if you have a volume that's trying to go above the limiter threshold, the limiter will reduce the volume to there. So it's kind of like, you can turn everything up as loud as you want, but it will only get to the volume where the limiter is engaged. It'll never get louder than that. Does that so kind of make sense a little bit? the only way I can really compare that is if you've got a, a limiter or a governor on your vehicle it only lets you go 100 miles an hour but if you've got a clipper it's basically just going to cut the fuel supply to the car completely exactly okay that's a perfect perfect way to think about it okay for extremely high peaks the only thing you adjust on a limiter is the threshold. Yep, at what decibel level you want the limiter to kick in. Okay. We'll pass the threshold, or not the frequency level, the decibel level past the threshold. The limiter is always going to be straight. It will not allow anything past that. Okay. So it's kind of like that, that car thing. You know, if you can accelerate to, let's say you accelerate at the same rate regardless of whatever mile per hour you're going, if you pass the the compression point, let's say the compression point is 100 miles an hour, then the rate at which you accelerate would be decreased um, going up above 100 miles per hour. But if you have a limiter, it will not allow you to exceed 100 miles per hour, and then a clipper would just cut off the fuel supply. Okay. Okay. I'll go. I I guess they just they just went out of order. So a limiter is on high frequencies, a gate is on low frequencies. Mm -hmm. I know they have one sir expander, all that stuff. So um, compressors are really good for preventing hearing loss and protecting your speakers because you don't want to blow a speaker. Um, whereas a gate and expander, I personally prefer expanders. Um, I think they're more useful than a gate, and gates can be kind of complicated to program. Um, so an example of when you would want to engage a gate or an expander is um, kind of just like what that video said with the different mics. Let's say you have three mics on stage. One is for a lead guitarist, one is for a bassist, and one is for the keyboard vocals. And you don't want the keyboard vocals to pick up any of the guitar audio. The guitar is far enough away that by the time the sound waves reach the mic, 
the sound waves would not be as loud as someone, you know, right in front of the mic talking into it, because that's a lot louder. So you can engage a gate to block the sound from the guitar so that only the vocals are heard because they're louder and they would open the gate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, an expander, um, I prefer an expander because I feel like a gate co loses a lot of detail in there, whereas an expander still leaves the detail that's just quieter than, you know, above the threshold. So um, an example of that is, you know, you want, let's say someone is talking and then all of a sudden they start whispering into the microphone. Mm -hmm. The whisper might not be powerful enough to get through the gate, but it, it, because an expander is not a gate, it still allows signal to pass through. It's just quieter. It would still allow the whisper to pass through, but when people are normally talking, the expander is still engaged on quieter sounds around it for enough to kind of decrease the audio from, you know, a guitar, or, you know, whatever. We're still going to so pick up some guitar, though, uh -huh. but it's but just going to be... It's, it's going like to be the, quieter. Yeah, it's kind of like the best of both worlds, like the par, par or Fernell. You get the it's, Parnell. Obviously, it's not going to overpower the uh, the vocal. Uh -huh. of even, Well, it might be some somewhat the same power going in with a whisper as a guitar far away. It might, but it's, it's quiet enough that it, it could prevent that. And we use expanders to help alleviate feedback. Um, that's also kind of why we use compressors and limiters too, so we don't want that that loop to start. In any and that's audio. all happening up on these this right. rack, right? So let's take a look at our equipment here. So when I use a compressor or a limiter, sometimes I don't want everything to be compressed. So what I do is I use the insert cable. So I take the insert, plug it in. As soon as the audio enters the board and gets through the gain, it's going to send it out into the compressor and expander, because I have the expander engaged, and then the audio is going to send it back out into the mix. So it'll already have been compressed, expanded, all of that stuff. So this right here is your expander or gate. This time switch right here um, will kind of engage either the gate or the expander. You want to refer to the user manual with this kind of equipment to see what's what. But this is where we set the threshold. Um, and then this right here is your compressor, compressor or limiter. And again, these buttons can change whether it's a compressor or a limiter. But right here you have the threshold, so at what decibel range it starts to compress the signal. Then right here you have the ratio, so by how much it's compressing the signal. In the video it used the two to one. Mm -hmm. This one's set at uh, like a two and a half to one. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit more. Then you have your attack time, so how quickly it takes for the signal to be compressed. The release time, how quickly it takes the signal to be um, decompressed, decompressed after it falls below the threshold. And then right here you have the decibel output. So again, because the compression takes place, it kind of reduces all of the volume. Mm -hmm. So you have to use an output volume to just kind of boost that back up yeah, to back up. the level that... so it's enough to get through all the equipment. Doesn't that put you back in the same scenario as you were before? Not entirely, because so you have all the different sound waves, kind of like in that chart. It it makes the it doesn't affect any of the quiet ones, but it affects the the lower ones. So the lower or the, sorry the higher ones. So the higher ones are closer to the lower ones. Um, oh. they, the lower ones, oh, the, right, right, the right. lower volume. In, input or whatever isn't affected by the compressor. It does, but, but it, in the video it did show that it kind of... Yes. The, but it, not at the it, same rate. Yes, not at the same rate. So, you know, these loud peaks are decreased this much while the smaller peaks are decreased by, you know, just that much. Just a fraction. Much. And that's just because of all the resistance it goes through when it goes through all I of the see. equipment. Okay. So you just want to turn the output volume up just a little bit just to get the smaller peaks back to the volume they were at. Okay. Well, the, the peaks were decompressed, so they're not as loud as they were before. Okay. All right. And then over here you have the limiter, so this just sets the threshold for the limiter. This right here is the de -esser. so that's actually going to go on in the next video. Controls how much um, you're EQing those down by, so this is kind of like the decibel. So I, I usually have it set to maximum, so it's EQing those up to, I think it's 6 decibels or 12 decibels. 
the male or female button right there engages whether it's a low voice or a high voice. So if it's engaged, it's kind of like a low, bassier voice. If it's disengaged, it moves those frequencies up on the, on the frequency spectrum to affect kind of higher voices, like mm -hmm. treble, that sort of thing. That's the DSer feature, right? Oh, it says it on there. DSer. And there's two of them. So you've got two. So we actually have four. Oh, so there's. This is, it goes this the is whole. one unit. This is another. This is another. And this is. Oh, okay. So, so you've got. So you could have four mics at the same time, uh -huh. kind of going on their own individual. Mm-hmm. DSers.